This is the Four Man Rush. Hello, Panther fans, and welcome to another podcast of the Four Man Rush. I'm your host, Timmy B.O., here with the four gentlemen, Larry, Kevin, Will, and Kenny J. And um, unless you've been living under the rock of the past the past six hours, um, uh, we, we've had a changing, changing of the guard, so to say. Um, and we're going to talk about that for pretty much the most part. Um, we've, we've lost uh, an integral part of the Panther franchise and Ron Rivera. Say what you want about this gentleman, folks, but, you know, winning his football coach in franchise history got us the only the, the second coach to get us to a Super Bowl. Um, I, think, I believe the winning is in terms of the NFC South division opponents. I think he's, he's the winning is in franchise history. I could be wrong about that. You got to check that stats, but the, this man was well, well respected, well loved. Tepper, Tepper was, hate, you know, hating to, to do this, but you know, it, it's time. It's time. Um, I know we talked about the, potential of this happening over the past couple of weeks and um, unfortunately it came it came true so um, we're going to talk about that and give this man some respect that he's well deserved um and we'll t- we'll talk briefly about the um the damn dirty birds we'll be playing again in o eight atl hot lana um I believe majority of the four man rush is going to be ja- going to be down there so uh check check your live feed on facebook for that um and uh you know Hopefully we're not going to show anything embarrassing. <laughs> Having too much fun down there. Not. Um, but anyway, hey, let's get to it. Um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll talk about Rivera. We knew what happened last game. We might we might touch on the last game. We might not. Um, <laughs> quite frankly, I don't think it's worth it. But anyway, um, Kevin, let's start with you, man. Um, if you want to talk about the Redskins, that's fine. Um, I, I I say f it, but you know, I'm just, I'm still I'm still better, bro. <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're not the only one bitter from reading the reports from what Mr. Tepper said today with his decision. The Redskins game was pretty much the final nail in the coffin for him. Um, he pretty much was tired of sleepless nights and shitty mood during the day. So, you know, it wasn't the only factor, but it definitely was the, uh, as they say, the coup de grace. So... Yeah, so that's pretty much as much as I'm gonna say about the the uh, game against the Redskins. That was the one that uh, finally made Tepper decide to move on from Ron Rivera. So, yeah. but uh, but yeah, as far as Ron Rivera, I'm I'm a huge fan of his. Always have been, even before uh, he became a Panthers head coach when he was a uh, you know coaching for the Philadelphia Eagles under Jim Johnson. Defense coordinator with the Bears during their 2006 Super Bowl season when he was out as the defense coordinator in San Diego when Noel Turner was the coach. Um, stand-up guy, class at the community. Him and his family definitely helped um, impact the community in so many various ways. So for me, I'm mixed emotions about it because of my personal attachment. I mean... I'm a fan and I'm I'm human and I got feelings. So, you know, I was one of the ones I think I said last week that I hope he gets one more year based on, you know, if a healthy Cam Newton comes back. But I also said that whatever Mr. Tepper decides, I'm a roll with, I'm on team Tupper and Tupper we trust. So that's where it's going to go for me. But just overall, man, I mean, Ron Rivera was, was someone that we saw develop from a coordinator into a coach. It was frustrating the first couple of years in 2011 and 2012 uh, of the 19 losses that we had because we were 6-10 in 2011 and 7-9 and nine in 2012. Of those 19 losses, 16 of those losses were by 7 points or less. And that was because of his conservative nature. Right. Uh, as far as coaching, not taking any risks. Uh, relying way too heavily on the defense to try to get the ball back when versus, you know, going for that extra yard or two. So, you know, it took that to develop the Riverboat Ron, you know, personality that came out after the uh, one and three start in 2013. Mm-hmm. Definitely gave us a lot of fun times that year. 
that was the uh, year that we led the league in sacks, 60 sacks, had that nice eight-game winning streak. Yeah. I mean, hey, you know, it was yeah. it was fun. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. Uh, but all things must come to an end at the end of the day. Nine seasons, only three other winning seasons. And I don't care how many people out there want to count 2014 as a quote-unquote winning season come into the playoffs. Seven wins, eight losses, and one tie in the regular season is not a winning season. We just happen to be the shit stain with the with the least amount of shit on it <laughs> in the division that year. So, you know, that's just how that goes. But yeah, yeah. it's a business. This franchise has never had back-to-back seasons. Mr. Tepper took over, and he said it's three things that's important to him. Winning, winning, and winning. Rivera's resume wasn't trending in that direction. So Mr. Tepper had to make a move. As a fan, I'm hurting right now a little bit because I love Rivera, and I wish him the best, him and his family, yeah. wherever he goes. And I think he'll do well at his next stop. Right. But I'm all excited, looking forward to what this new book, because this is not even a chapter no more. This is a new book that Mr. Tepper is about to write. So I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Uh, Larry, before you get out, of, get out of range, man, do you have anything to add, please? Uh, I'm a big Ron Rivera fan, always have been. Even when we started off one and three, I was one of those people that was rooting to give him a chance because I believe in continuity. You know, I don't believe in just coaching turnover. So I was always behind him. But at the end of the day, when you've been living in mediocrity for so long, you kind of demand the change. That's why I'm really not as hurt as a lot of Ron Rivera fans would be. It's kind of like that that toxic relationship that you've been in. You know, you in love with a girl, mm. been in love with a girl, but it's just not working out, so you got to walk away. Mm. And usually when you do things like walk away, you know, things tend to be brighter on the other side. So that's just where I'm at with this this long relationship we've had with Ron Rivera. It's been a long nine years. I have no doubts that if he was going to continue coaching, he can because I think he's one of the best in the business. Also, you know, he got a new deal, so he's still going to be getting some money coming in that bank account. So I don't think it's going to be as painful for him as what most people are thinking. I just think it's one of those situations where it's going to work out for all parties involved. Mm. And moving forward, I just want to make sure that whoever the new coach is going to be, it has to be an upgrade. I, I don't want to – Yeah. I believe in taking calculated risks, but at the same time, I don't want to find myself like the New York Jets or the Tampa Bay Bucks just recycling coaches every two years because there's no way to win that way. So I think we lost a really good coach, and I feel like he's going to do well. And honestly, the time off for him is probably what he needed because at times, within the last three or four years, it just seemed like he was fatigued. You know, he dealt with a lot. Ownership turnover, uh, no stability with your quarterback because he keeps getting hurt. Mm -hmm. You got to answer for questions where – it's really not on you as the GM. He's been through two GM changes since he's been a coach. It's not easy to get through. So True. I know he's fatigued. I know he'll get some rest. And hopefully he can come back stronger and better than ever. I wish him nothing but the best going forward. Right on. Kenneth. Yeah, change is inevitable, Tim. You know, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just something that was going to happen sooner or later. You know, did we think it was going to happen this soon? I don't think we did. I, I knew yeah. that. And I said last week, yo, this is a, a game that you had to win. Yeah. You had to win this game. You're going, and I, I got to speak on the Washington game because that's a part of it. It's a part of the situation. Yeah, you're going, you're going against a two and nine team, mm -hmm. not a very good team. Granted, we're not a good team either. Mm -hmm. But you were on a three game losing streak at that point, and this was a game that you, hey, if you win it, you're still in the playoff chase. Yeah, you're still in it. So as well, I was I was reading something earlier where. Tepper said that, you know, hey, he, he thought about firing him a few weeks ago against the Atlanta game. That was almost it for him. Wow. Where he got sleep. So, I mean, that's, wow. that's something to think about right there. But, you know, this is uh, Ron Rivera. I love the guy. You know, um, he's done a lot of good for us. He was 76, 63 and 1 over 140 games. Uh, he's done a lot of great things. And, over the, and he's no bum because over the last 30 years, he's the only coach out of four other coaches to have multiple head coaching of the year, uh, yeah, winning head coach of the year. Mm. The other ones are Bill Belichick, Bruce Arians, and Dan Reeves. So, wow. I mean, it's 
I say a good guy, man, I, I hate this for him. Um, I've been very critical of him over the years. You know, I just, just like, okay, man, it's time to move on. I think his message is getting stale in the locker room. Mm -hmm. But on that game on Sunday, that was really the first time in a long time that I just saw the team give up on him. They, yeah. they gave up on him, man. Just, you know, you, you see the running is a team that's 27th in the league in rushing, and they come in and they have over 200 yards. You have Adrian Peterson. <laughs> looks like he's looked like 2012 all over again. I hate to talk down on him at this point, but I just want the fans out there to see, you know, okay, this is what Tepper was thinking. You know, this is a guy that just spent over $2 billion on this team. Mm -hmm. And the free, he gave him a chance because he's been 12 and 16 over the past two seasons. That's what Tepper was looking at. So it's not necessarily the whole body of work, which the whole body of work, it does look decent, but you got to look at when he was here, what he saw for himself up close and personal. Mm -hmm. He saw a 12 and 16 team, you know, and that it, this is a big investment for him. This isn't just, you know, a, a new car for him. You know, this is a franchise that he wants to be here for many years to come. Mm -hmm. And he's been patient with them. He gave them time. He could have gotten rid of them last year if he wanted to and brought and bring in his new guys. But he figured he'd give the guy a chance and it didn't turn out the way that he wanted to. And I think that Tepper, he sent a clear message in Carolina today, man. You know, he's tired of mediocrity. He's tired of it, man. He knows the history of the team. You know, he's, He's not impressed with it. So he he really wants to, you know, you got to realize he came from a winning culture in mm -hmm. Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they'd have six championships. That's what he's used to. Right. Now, is it to say that, you know, we're, we're going to get to that point anytime soon? Probably not. But at the same time, you know, when you, you haven't had a back-to-back -back winning season ever and you just lost four games straight and your last loss was to a 2-9 team, a terrible team, they didn't just that don't don't look at that final score and just say, oh man, it's it was 29 21. They kicked our ass, man. Yeah. Real talk. So don't 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 just look at that. Oh, it was just by eight points. You know, they kicked our ass. <laughs> that was a butt whooping. I was embarrassed. Mm, that was probably the most embarrassed that I've been in, in a while. I mean, I know the Falcons, that that was a bad loss, but man, bad. just a two and nine team, though. Another one in Washington. Just to lose that way. Man. And then, like I said, there were just times where everybody was just standing around just looking. Yeah, man. But when it gets to that point, you you gotta you gotta make some type of change. And you know, it's just the game this weekend going into Atlanta. Do I do I think we're going to win? I, I'm not 100 percent positive on that. But I do think that these changes is gonna fire these players up just a little bit. Yeah. You know, this is this is our party get to Ron Rivera. You know, okay, you know, he's gone now, but man, let, let's get this for him, man. Yeah. Now we know he's watching. And you know, you, you gotta rile him up somehow. So at the end of the day, I think, you know, he had a lot of good years in Carolina. He's, he's done some great things for us. I'm proud to call him coach over the years. And wherever he does go next, he's going, he's going to do a good job. And he's going to resurrect the franchise. There's a lot of teams that can use a Ron Rivera right now. Yep. You got the Browns. <laughs> oh, boy. No, you, you, you got several teams that can use his services. So yeah. I wish him the best of luck. And um, I, I know he's going to do great, man. But like I said, change is inevitable, man. We knew it was going to happen. We just didn't know when. I thought it was going to happen in the off season, but right. yeah. hey, you know, you like you have an owner that's not playing games right now, man. He's serious, and he wants to build a winning culture. And sometimes, in order to get to that point, you got to make the hard decisions. As a leader, any leader knows that. Right. You're a leader, Tim. You you own your own businesses, and I'm sure at times you had to make those tough decisions. Okay, man. Yeah, I heard. I think I heard someone say in the press conference today or the the conference the interview. You know, Tim had a little tear in his eye. Yeah. So it's obvious that he's come to, you know, really respect Ron Rivera as not just a coach, but a man. You know, so you, you got to look at it from that aspect as well, because this is a person that's done well in the community. He's done a lot of great things. So mm -hmm. it's not just a coach. And I, I respect Ron, Ron Rivera as a man just as much as a coach. Amen. You know, you just, sometimes you, you look at people and you see that, okay, they're, they're a genuine person. This isn't just an act that they're putting on. And that's what I'm going to miss about him the most is, is him being so personable. Right. But at the end of the day, personable, that doesn't win games. <laughs> nah, man. And they didn't win games. They mm -hmm. didn't win games. So didn't. I'll say it once again, the past two seasons, 12 and 16, that's not good. That's not good, man. So mm -hmm. we got to be better than that. And I was a fan before Ron Rivera. I'll be a fan after him. I'm Team Tepper right now, just like Kevin said. And, you know, I, hey, if it takes two or three more years to, to write this ship, then I, I'm cool with that. I'm okay. Cool. But we, hey, you know, I'd, I'd rather do that than just, you know, stay in mediocrity forever. 
Right. That's, that's where I'm at with it for right now. Heck yeah, man. Real talk. Mr. Will. You know, I just think I'm happy. You know, this is the, probably the best run we've had in franchise history. So I'm just appreciative of what Ron Rivera was able to do. I look at where we were as a franchise when he first arrived here. I mean, we're 2-14. and 14, oh, yeah. Terrible organization. <laughs> cap hell. A lot of bad contracts. You know, he drafts Cam Newton. Wasn't a... But that's a... Kind of overshadows a pretty bad 2011 draft, actually. Yeah. So, I mean, we just had top problems building a team, you know, fielding a you know, formidable team. But every year with Ron, we just continued to see improvement. 2011, we jumped up to six games. We're up to seven games. We win our first, you know, division title in however many years, I think since 2008 mm -hmm. and 2013. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, 2014, we take another step forward, win our first playoff game. And, how, I mean, how many years was, had it been since we won a playoff well, game at man. that point? And then 15-1, and one, I just think, you know, 2015, we reached our peak, had the best, season in franchise history yeah and i mean that's probably the most memorable season you know we've ever had and that was sure probably was. the most fun it's ever been to be a panthers fan that year Amen. i mean you just saw the team clicking on all cylinders everything come together we know we saw everybody's vision cam was playing the best football of his career you know i mean it was just a good time to be a panther fan that year but it happens i mean nine year coaching tenures aren't very common in the nfl so he probably outlasted, you know, a lot of other coaches out there. So, you know, it just happens. You peak, you know, you take a few steps backwards, see if you can revive it, and you don't. So, you know, I'm not going to say anything negative about Ron. I respect him as a man, respect him as a coach. Tepper did what he did. I just really don't have much to say on it. I mean, it's a business of winning and success, and we just haven't been a successful team over the past couple of years. So I wish him the best, and we'll see what the future beholds for this team. Hey Kevin, if you could if you could name one thing that you think cost Ron Rivera the locker room, not games, but the locker room, what do you think that would be? Hmm, cost in the locker room. You know, under Ron Rivera, you know, you got some, you know, I think we can all agree we started being known around the league as having one of the best uh locker room cultures around. Right. So for me, this is kind of a tough one to try to think of something that may have cost in the locker room. But if I was to take a calculated guess, just based on, you know, my knowledge and things that's been seen and heard. I, yeah, it's tough. I mean, my thing is this. I just think that we had a lot of players on a one year contract that were, quote unquote, stepping out of their out of the team scheme to try to elevate their individual stats. Mm. And I think that was one of the things that that led to all of a sudden our team just being so so poor defensively, particularly against the run. I mean, it's crazy to think we're near dead last in run defense, but we're leading the league in sacks. <laughs> You I know, mean, it's just like, wow, what a total opposite when what the you know, when last year I think we were you know, we was we was decent against the run, but we was like dead last, nearly in sacks as well. So, I mean, it's. I think it was just. I just think that was, if anything, the veterans were, I guess, not held accountable, per se. That were, I guess, playing in that last year. Um, you know, Rivera let players be themselves. You know, we. We all saw how, true. you know, he would uh, have T-shirts made, you know, based on things, going, particularly with Cam and, uh, you know, slogans or sayings. I mean, he seemed to really be a, uh, mm -hmm. a player's coach. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, that's the only thing that I can think of right now to top of my head about the uh, about the locker room and Rivera, because for a large part of the time while he's been here, it's pretty much been a great locker room culture. Yeah, he's always had a locker room a lot, man. It's the the reason I asked that question is because like 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 uh like like Kenneth alluded to, it seemed like the guys just gave up out there, um, against Washington. It's uh, I don't I'm not saying not to say necessarily that quote unquote effort wasn't there, but you you, you could see it. Just, they just weren't. I don't know, man. It's just like 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 you said, Kevin. They, they, it looks like they weren't holding each other accountable. And I granted we couldn't be on the sideline, and, you know, and, and, and you know listen to the discussion between the. Uh, 
position coaches and whatnot, but it the you could, the energy on the field was just different for some reason. You know, when you I watch the that, film, it's the um you watch the film. I think it's the effort's there. I mean, I didn't really see guys quitting on plays. I mean, they're chasing ball carriers down. They're trying. They're trying to do it. But I think a lot of it's scheme related. I mean, when you're getting consistently pushed around by bigger offensive linemen, Luke and Shaq are getting offensive guards pushed on them. I mean, it's just not – it wears on you. I mean, it's tired. It's hard consistently fighting 300-pound men off you True. all game long like that. True. So I think it's more about they're not really – in a, the new scheme has been difficult on everybody. Yeah. You have a lot of guys that are used to being 4-3 players. And they're undersized, you know, used to being pass rushers, and they're – now asked to eat blocks and play the run. So they're just getting pushed off the ball. I mean, they're trying. They're coming off the ball hard, trying to do the best they can. Right. You know, Ron's doing everything he could. He's calling run blitzes. He's calling stunts, trying to have guys shoot gaps to try to make things happen. But when you do that, you know, it's like a pass blitz. You risk other things happening and big holes open up. Guys cut back and they make big plays. So I just think, I don't really think it's a locker room issue or effort thing. I just think, no, he just tried everything he could do. The personnel just wasn't there to do what he wanted to do. I mean, he took over the defense last year. We just were unable to get a pass rush. So we had one year to implement a new scheme. He got smaller and faster. And when you do that, you just sacrifice run defense. So I just think, like I said earlier today, it was funny because in the chat I had mentioned, I look, I was watching the film. And I'm like, you know what? I just think it's a white flag type situation. The guys are giving their all, doing what they can. Coaches are trying to you know, scheme around it, make calls to try to adjust and compensate for the deficiencies, but nothing's working. And I just think that's probably why Tepper ultimately went in this direction because everything Ron was trying to do, no matter how hard the guys were fighting, it just wasn't working and they weren't getting it done. So, I mean, I don't think it's an issue of guys quitting on their coach. I mean, you ask, you look at Twitter, the guys love Ron Rivera. He's getting oh, the for sure. highest praise from everybody, but sometimes you just – it just runs its course, and it's time for a new change of scenery for both sides. Yeah. Kenneth, you have anything to say? Man, yeah, I mean, uh, you guys all make great points, but, you know, sometimes, you know, a, a message just gets stale after after a while. You know, you just, that, that, that's really all it is. You know, it, it gets stale. You know, he, he's a great coach. He's a great motivator. The, the players do love him, but let's not get that twisted at all, but. After a while, I think a message does get stale. And I, I think he's tired, man. You know, he he might be, you know, just not saying that he wanted to get fired. But, mm -hmm. you know, now that he is, you know, hey, you know, it's, it's time to relax a little bit and, you know, just, uh, hey, maybe go on to another situation. Because sometimes, you know, you just need a, a breath of fresh air, a new city, a new situation. Mm -hmm. And I think that'd be good for him. But, you know, I, I just think it's a stale message. You know, we, we've seen it happen to the best of them. You know, John Fox. You know, people may talk all they want about him, but he went off to Chicago, did pretty good for a little while, went to Denver, did pretty good for a little while too. So, now it wasn't that John Fox was a bad coach. It was just his message after a while got stale. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just some of the players just aren't going to listen. And then at the same time, you know, you have some of these players that, that come from a losing culture. You know, they, they're not really used to winning. So when you get punched in the mouth, you, you in the, your, your back is against the wall. You don't really know how to react mm -hmm. like a champion. So... Some people can take that how they want to take it, but that's that's kind of what I see from it. And I've heard a few of you say it as well. Just, you know, some of these players, they don't come from winning franchises. They just got to call it for what it is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, offseason, that's going to be addressed, I'm pretty sure. But, you know, I got to put it all out there at this point. You know, I can't hold any punches with it. We're out of, we're out of the playoffs now. So we, we can just really be real with one another, keep it 100. But, you know, we, we, we got to build a winning culture around here and, you know, and if you don't fit the bill for that, then you got to go. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. And I don't think everybody's going to be fit to be here next year or the year after that. So mm -hmm. a lot of tough decisions are going to have to be made. But, you know, when you got the playoffs on the line, I got to reiterate this one more time. The playoffs are on the line and you get that type of effort at home. When you haven't protected your house all year, that's the type of effort that you get. Get the hell off our team. And that's what it is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm G. Yes, I just gotta keep it real at this point, man. I, I love my team I and I want to see them win. And yeah, I know man. the fans are tired of this. Yeah, man. I know that. Yeah. But when you have, when you're in that situation, you got these, all these fans like Kevin and others that go to these games every week, every, all these home games, mm -hmm. they spend their hard earned money. And that's the type of effort that you give. That's not fair, man. That's right. That's not fair.
That's not fair to Tepper that took this team over. Mm -hmm. No, over $2 billion. That's not what he spent his money on. Mm -hmm. That's not what he did. So this is just going to be a, a walk in the park with some ice cream and some popcorn. Shit. You're going to have to put that work in. And, uh, you know, I think we will get to that point, but I'm still disgusted by that last that last uh, loss, man. I, I yeah, really that am. Was... And that's, that's just going to haunt me for a little while, like right there. Child, I, I did that. I, I have to apologize to the fans out there that are listening, man. I called a blowout victory. So I'm, I'm going to stand on that as a man. I called a blowout victory 38 to 10. Yep. I apologize for getting y'all hyped up about that. <laughs> And that's the type of effort that y'all team gave y'all. I apologize, man. I mean, but that I, mean, I, I expect I expected more. I really did. And maybe <laughs> I did over I, I kind of put those expectations a little high. Maybe I did. I don't know, when man. Cam got, when, when Cam got hurt. I, I, I gotta keep it <laughs> real again. Maybe we did. Maybe, know. you know, with Cam Kyle Allen, you know, maybe I put a little bit too pressure, too much pressure on him. I don't think so. Uh, it'll be different if Kyle came into the game in Arizona and we just got blown out 38 nothing. Dude, the dude balled. I mean, that's, he did. That's, he, he did. That's a legit, that's he, he, a he did ball, but maybe in the grand scheme of things, maybe I got a little too excited about that. I see, okay, wow, this guy, this guy came out. He threw yeah. multiple touchdowns and he had a great game. Yeah. Maybe I put the hopes up for him a little too high. Maybe, maybe yeah, that was my fault. That's on me, and a, and a few others as well. You know, some of the fans they got a little too excited about that yeah, when he yeah. is what he is, and I'm not downing anyone because. I've already said what I think Kyle is, Kyle Allen, and that's no disrespect to him. I think he's a good guy. He's a good quarterback. But I think his ceiling is a backup mm -hmm. quarterback at this point. That's, that's what he is. Mm -hmm. He did what he had to do. He stepped up to the plate, and he did, he did pretty good. Yeah. But I think that's his ceiling. Yeah. And maybe I put too much pressure on him in my mind. Okay, he's going to lead us to the playoffs, and he's going to make some things happen in the playoffs when that wasn't really a realistic expectation in the first place. That was never going to happen. And Will has said that too. You know, hey, you know, maybe maybe we put too much pressure on him, man. You were, I know Cam, I expected him to win, what, eight games this season? Mm -hmm. They expected him to win eight games. Mm -hmm. So what did you think Kyle Allen was going to do? <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> and I know that kind of came off as a little disrespectful right there. Don't uh, disrespect real. to him, but maybe I did put too much on him. That's real. And I apologize for I apologize for that, man. Yeah, it's all good. Maybe man. I did, man. But that, that's a learning experience for me, not to get a little too excited, watch it all play out. And I know that's what Lawrence did. He, he he'll talk about that whenever you know he's ready to. But mm -hmm. he really didn't buy into that from the beginning. And I'll let him talk about that. But mm -hmm. I think maybe I should have maybe thought the same thing. Hey, you know, just just do it game by game. That's what this is. That's, and I, and I, I hate to kind of go off on a, a tangent right now, but oh, <laughs> I, I just had to release that right there. Let that out. <laughs> It, it was. It was. I good. mean, you know, one thing I do respect about Ron Rivera, though, and a lot of players will attest to that, is he stands up for his players in all of his press conferences. Absolutely. I remember in 2017, we had the probably the worst receiving core ever assembled. <laughs> they called him the law firm. Ron Rivera <laughs> showed up to the press conference with the Shepard Clay yeah. Burson uh, <laughs> law firm T-shirt on. Yeah. So he's supporting these guys. And I think that's the sign of a good leader. You know, you're supporting your guys through the thick and thin, right. you know, backing them. When the fans and the media try to go after them and drag them down, he stands up for them. I think that's what they want as a player's coach. And I think that's why he's so respected across the league and why Tepper's always, you know, why Tepper teared up when he tried to fire him because he said he's just a good man, one of the best mm -hmm. men he's ever met. And I think that's going to be something that's going to be hard to replace. You know, a lot of coaches out there, they're not good leaders of men. They don't relate to the players very well. I know Jason Garrett's been criticized for that uh, as well, that he just can't relate to the players. So, I mean, it's going to be a tough replacing what Rivera brought to the table. But like most people said, you know, it's we've come to that point where we just peaked as an organization and it's time to move on. But, you know, I think... They're all good things come to an end. I think I'm just, you know, content with it now. I understand what happened. You know, it just happens. You know, it's just been a solid nine-year run. Let's get ready for the next chapter. You know, and for me, you know, just to add on what y'all saying, when I'm looking back, you know, over the last two years, that's really, you know, the records don't reflect, you know, how much, just listening to y'all talk, I'm looking at about in the last two years, 12 plays where we could easily <laughs> be looking at back-to-back -back 12 win seasons. Yeah. And, and that's, that's not exactly. This year alone, right now, 
four yards, four yards is what's keeping us from being nine and three right now. Mm. In spite of all the run defense damage, I mean, leaking and the turnovers, the fumbles, all that. It, it came down in four separate games, one yard keeping us from winning the game. And when he, when, when Rivera always used to say football is a, a game of interest and it comes down to just four or five plays a game, that's literally all that's keeping us from talking. We're not talking about, uh, you know, we getting our backs blown out by 17 points or more these last couple of years. I mean, we're, we're, we're literally talking about <laughs> What's that? Let's see what four yards. That's what three feet. So 36 inches. So what? 144 inches. I'm being a nerd right now with the map, but 144 inches is kept us from getting four additional wins and making us a nine and three team and right up in the mix for, you know, a fighting for a top seed in the, in the playoffs. It's just crazy that, that, you know, it came down to that, but you know, when you reflect back on our 2015 season, you know, we was winning all those games like that. Yeah, we was throwing up a lot of points and things like that. But we had several games where we, uh, well, we had to pull it out at, at the, in the last in the last couple of minutes too. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just it's just crazy that uh, that's I guess that's why my mixed feelings are in because I know so many games we were just a play a yard. Yeah. A first down, just just something small like this. This hasn't been like ass whoopings we've we've gotten yeah. in the losses over the last two years. But at the end of the day, a W is a W, a L is a L. I get that. So um, it's just crazy that <laughs> four yards is what's keeping us from being nine and three right now. But I think that's a testament to Rivera as well. It just shows you that mm-hmm. the team never quit on them and they fight down to the very end. You know, even you see floods of fans walking out of the. Stadium the other day, you know, they fought to the end, got the onside kick and came up once again a yard short. Yeah. So I just think that's further proof that, you know, they fought for this coach. You know, it just just things happen. Things don't always go your way. You know, you just take it on the chin and you move on. You know, everybody's going to be all right. Rivera will get the rest of his paycheck or go on and coach another team and we'll start our rebuilding process and see what happens. But I think as far as the close games go, Tepper made a good point in his press conference. He said the Falcons game left him with a bad taste in his mouth because you're losing to a bad 2-9 and nine team. The Saints game, he said, was a very good effort against a great team. So he's saying he likes that because it showed that the team's competing hard. So he thought about, you know, that went in Rivera's favor. But yeah. to come back after a performance like that, again, against the Redskins like that, you know, just uh, that was kind of the last straw. So. Yeah. You know, it is what it is, man. You know, I think at this stage, not going to kick a man while he's down. Let's just yeah. appreciate what he's done for this organization and move on. Time to yeah. start the new chapter. Yeah. An era that produced franchise records, man. I mean, that's 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 the bottom line. The man the man came and he put us in position to to win a Super Bowl and um, I'm not going to get into all that, and I'm not I'm not one of those people who, who harps on the fumble because there was four quarters to be played. So, but yeah, we yeah, Ron Rivera will, will go down as one of the greatest coaches of this franchise. Peace oh, definitely. Me. Just one last thing, Tim. I mean, yeah. you were talking about the um, Super Bowl season as a fan. Till I'm in my grave, I'm going to always remember how much fun I had as a fan. In 2015, bro. I mean, I mean, we got 90 year old Betty White doing a dab. You know, we got old elderly. Don't take offense, people. We have elderly white women dabbing because of you know because of the team, man. And I, I, I'm, hey, man, bro. The city. I was living in Charlotte. The sit, the the electricity. And the feeling that city had for that mm. season, man, was something I never felt mm. and I never forget, man. I mean, the pride, the passion, yeah. the energy. Yeah. I got a taste of that, man. I, I, we, I, I want to taste it again, but, you know, I know it didn't end the way we wanted to, man, but I, I have no regrets. No. Um, you know, you know, Tim, you, you met up with me for a couple yeah. games that year, man. Yeah. I mean, we was... We was dabbing it up, yeah. and you know what I'm saying. It was special, Everything, man. man. So, it was special. hey, man, R- Rivera brought the year to da- help bring the year to dab in with us. Cause, like I said, he let Cam be Cam. Yeah. Um. Uh, so, hey, I, I'm I'm thankful for that. That that'll be one of my fondest memories of Rivera's the year to dab. 
What that about so 2013, true. that front seven you built with Greg Hardy, Charles Johnson, mm -hmm. Star, KK, and you mm -hmm. had Luke and uh, TD, a TD, linebacker. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that defense was mean. Man. I think they had 60 sacks. I was going to say, they year, had the most you know? sacks in yeah. franchise history, didn't they? I think <laughs> yeah, man. Something. Yeah, 60 sacks that year. Terrorizing people. Man, that was special. God, man. Yeah, R Rivera. Rivera put together some. Uh, he put together some defensive fronts, man. It's uh, well, you know. I, but as as you guys mentioned, man, you know, it's it's time to move on. And um, we got Atlanta Sunday. What you guys gonna be doing down there, man? Who's gonna be down there? She bright and early. I fly in probably eight fifteen a.m. So oh. I will watch them college ball games Saturday afternoon. Got. Clemson versus my UVA squad. Ooh. Watch them get drilled by Clemson. <laughs> Blown out. <laughs> you got the SEC championship. And Sunday, you know, we'll get oh, a man. first look at Perry Fowell, you know, and yeah. Scott Turner running the show. So, I mean, damn, we got at least got me something to look forward to this week. You know, I think you know, we haven't gotten to that topic on potential replacements for Ron Rivera, but I think right. Perry Fowell deserves a legitimate look. I mean, the guy has been waiting his turn for years and years. He was one of the hottest candidates back in 2011 and was, I think was actually the runner-up. And we ended up hiring Rivera instead. Oh, for real? So, yeah, so Perry, yeah. for when he went to the Giants as a defensive coordinator, won that Super Bowl. I think that was 2011. So I'm excited to see what he brings to the table. Tepper mentioned that, you know, he commands the room. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what you want to see from your head coach. And then you're going to have Scott Turner with his first opportunity to call plays so maybe he can be our own Sean McVay or our own undiscovered you know young talented innovative offensive coach that Tepper wants to find so I mean hey man it's football season you know I'm not I'm not quitting yet you know, yeah, I'm, I'm in this you know I'm gonna find playing. something to look forward to I'm gonna evaluate players evaluate schemes coaches and I'm in this every step of the way because when we ultimately do get that ring it'll be that much sweeter you know I, I guess we'll learn more about because Tepper said he's looking for you know, replacements immediately. But I, at the same time, I'm pretty sure that he's he's got his eyes on um, Pharrell too. Because I mean, I didn't, I didn't know he had that um, had that pedigree. Uh, but was I'm, I'm assuming Herney was here when he was being interviewed with Ron, right? Yep. So okay, so he has he has some type of rapport. That's that's, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Nah, that's why you listen to the Four Man Rush people. <laughs> yep. And um, I'm definitely gonna be down there in Atlanta as well. Um, yeah. You know, I had I had a uh, had four had four vacation days left in this month, and it's like use it or lose it. So I said, well, give me Friday and Monday off. So I'll uh, I'll be heading down to Atlanta uh, early Friday afternoon. Get ahead of that that uh, infamous Atlanta afternoon traffic. Oh, you don't want to party, so, there, bro? Oof. Nah, nah. I've been there many times. I. Trust me, I already know. I got family there. I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I ain't there by if I ain't there by one o'clock, it's 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 a wrap. Like that traffic get an early start. <laughs> yeah, you never lie. But um, yeah, but um, definitely look forward to being there. Um, you know, Larry, he's he lives in Atlanta, so mm -hmm. you know it'll be uh we'll be we'll be kicking it. You know, hopefully we um we'll see uh what what can shake loose and. You know, like Will said, you know, catch some college football on Saturday and, you know, see what the city brings. Probably run into a few Falcon fans. We kind of done bonded with over the years and, you know, talk some, talk some shit with them and, <laughs> right on. you know, you know, get them some hell, let them give us some hell and, you know, we'll go from there. But, uh, yeah, Four Man Rush is uh, definitely meeting up in, uh, in Atlanta this weekend and looking forward to it and, God, if we do pull this off with an interim coach, mm. the petty that I should release <laughs> to them Falcon fans. Now, right now they got all the jokes, and rightfully so. They they yeah. beat us yeah. seven of the last eight times, but um, yeah. But if this ever was a win one for the Gipper, mm. you know, type type game, you know, this one for Coach Rivera, you know, this uh, this was be it because, if I'm not mistaken, our best effort against the run. Came against Atlanta um, a few weeks back. They had 28 carries for 52 yards. Mm. Um, you know, but like I said, we just kept shooting ourselves in the foot and and giving them easy open field position and things like that. So, 
look forward to that. And um, oh, I see, uh, I see, Larry done jumped us back in, so yeah. he could definitely uh, give us part about uh, this upcoming weekend as well. Well, Larry, welcome back. What's going on, man? So, um, you're gonna be in the old well, you live in Atlanta, obviously. So, um, what's what's what you guys gonna be up to the, this weekend, man? I hope to check out Cam Cigar Lounge, take a ride over the fellowship. Right on. You know, see what I can do there, see what that what that vibe is looking like. Um, just basically share an experience that with my brothers that I get to do all year long. I get to talk shit to Falcon fans <laughs> live and direct. <laughs> so, you know, all of this all of the tough guy stuff that they do on the internet, you know, it's I, I just can't wait for four man rush to see that that's not evident. Mm. In real life, like they're not tough guys at all. Mm. So, in stereo, I'm excited stereo. about that. Hopefully, take a take a trip to the U bar. Maybe take a trip to Tavern. Maybe take a trip to Fifty Yard Line. There's a couple little spots I want to show everybody yeah, around. Yeah, that's what's up. Damn. Uh, hopefully, you get to drink me a couple IPAs and drink me a few shots of whiskey. To you know, I just want to drink the season away at this point. <laughs> <laughs> There's you know, a tear in my beard. I never actually got to meet Will in person, so I'm excited for that. Yeah, it's hard. It's um, hard to get a hold of Will, man. <laughs> yeah, definitely excited for that, man. You know, I also live in the strip club capital of the world, so if they want to do a little bit of that. I got some spots mm. we can take take a look at as well. Chocolate City, man. And, uh, anybody in Panther Nation uh, interested in coming coming to Atlanta? You know, these tickets are like, I think, thirty five cent yeah. online. So. Yeah. You know, just take take a look. <laughs> try, to, try to get out here if you can. Atlanta is a beautiful place. So I, I enjoy living here. Um, it's not as bad as people think because Atlanta actually is a terrible sports town. You know, they love their Braves. They love their Falcons. They love their Hawks. But uh, if you look at it, none of those teams win. So the most exciting thing that they got going on here is Atlanta United. They love they love the soccer team. But, oh, okay. you know, soccer is not the biggest sport in America yet. So, you know, yeah. take rocks. <laughs> We play that yeah, other Coach football. Perry got them, though. Coach Perry going to beat them, man. Watch. I believe in Perry. I think you're Team too, Perry right now. Let's go. Let's go, P. Yeah. Kenny G, what you... What's, what's, ahead, since Kenny. you brought up strippers, I, I, I'm going to have my $40 ready since we talking about strippers. Uh-oh. You know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when, in, when in Rome. <laughs> do what the Romans do? Yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> in a, in, and we're, you know, I, I, I'm gonna make it do what it do, baby. <laughs> Kenny G, man, what, you, I don't think you're gonna be able to make it, right? No, I'm not gonna be able to make it this go around. You know, yeah. you're definitely, you know, got some things going on. But from what Larry's saying, man, they, they're definitely gonna have a good time. And I wish I was able to go there. I definitely have my forty dollars, you know, right, <laughs> right there on deck. But uh, I, I know those, those guys are going to have a good time. You know, Atlanta is a beautiful city. My sure sister is. lived there for one year, oh, okay. several years ago, and I went there every chance that I could get. So I can only imagine what is the city's like now. Mm. Uh, some of the most beautiful women in the world that I've seen there. So mm. you you guys have some fun, man. And uh, I'm sure you'll have a lot of stories when you get back, oh, for Lord. sure. <laughs> that might not be on the podcast, folks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Four man rush after hours edition. Ah! Man, one of these days, yo. One of these days. Most of, most of the time, I get down to Atlanta in uh, you know March when the, the voiceover conference is. But you know, I yeah, I'm gonna be able to make it down there neither. But Dag Nabbit, take some pictures, man. And uh, fans, if you listen to this, man, make sure you guys check out the uh, Four Man Rush Facebook. Um, I'm sure I'm sure Kevin I have a live feed up with the fellas down there representing that four man rush definitely. So get on that. Um Yeah, and, um I think let's see, what, is there anything else we guys want to touch on? We'll have a lot more information uh, about this coaching the coaching carousel uh probably next episode. I'm just, go ahead, Kevin, I'm sorry. Yeah, well I was thinking about uh, you know, Mr. Tepper had a one on one interview with uh with Bill Voth of the uh, of the Panthers dot com. Oh yeah, and you know he uh, he dropped a lot of you know he dropped a lot of information you know for us to kind of get some insight on uh, where where we go from here, and you know just just scanning over some of the, um, some of the information and like I said you can go to the the Carolina Panthers official website Panthers dot com and see the uh, six minute interview that. 
Mr. Tepper had with uh, Bill both. But basically just looking over uh, just some of the highlights from it. Um, not one of the reasons Mr. Tepper said he made the move now at the end of the season is that he didn't want to put a team at a competitive disadvantage because he know that other teams are already starting to begin interviewing other potential head coaches, candidates, and he said he didn't want to conduct the search behind Ron Rivera's back. So that's why he wanted to, you know, he called Rivera up to the stadium and told him, sat down with him face-to-face and uh, let him made him known of his decision. So that's probably another reason why he was uh, teary-eyed as well because, you know, that's, that's got to be something hard to do for someone that you, you know, grown to care about. Um, let's see another thing, just looking off the, uh, looking off the Twitter feed here, um, uh, AP writer for the Carolina Panthers, Steve Reed, just looking over his tweets right now. It says that Mr. Tepper wants a standard that would be built and sustained. He cautioned fans that might not happen next year, but he's in search of sustained excellence. He said that it won't be immediate gratification. It is a building process. So this is something there at the four man rush that we're going to have to constantly remind all of our fans that just because Rare was fired today, it doesn't mean whoever we get, we got to immediately expect, you know, a deep playoff run next year. It's not going to work that way. If it falls that way, it'll be a shock to us all. But Mm -hmm. basically we just got to kind of keep reasonable expectations um, as far as, you know, from going for him. Me personally, I got two to four year rebuild time before I think we're a serious, you know, title contender again. But I'm definitely looking forward to Mr. Tepper talking about wanting to have sustained excellence. As you know, we are the only NFL franchise, folks, that has never had back to back winning seasons above 500 percent, above 500 winning percentage. Mm. Only one team. Every other franchise in the NFL right now has had back-to-back winning seasons at least once, and we have not. So that right there, yeah, that's, you know, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, I know a lot of people wanted thought wanted Herney gone, but Mr. Trevor said that Her- he thought Herney was one of the best evaluators of college talent, and he f- called f- calls him an asset. And the new position that he's creating is going to be assistant general manager and vice president of football operations. Basically, this will be someone that will handle scouting the pro player personnel and let Herney focus on the college player personnel. Mm. So, uh, you know, that's just, you know, again, that's just some of the things um, that were also said today by Mr. Tupper and as far as like plans and moving forward and, you know, all these other things, you know, if any one of you guys want to weigh in on any of these, uh, any of the other things said by Tepper today. Yeah, to add to that, he also did an interview with the media, you know, which is rare. You don't see owners do this a lot. So I appreciate him stepping out after having to deliver that tough news. Yeah. But again, you know, he's talking about just reiterating a lot of the things he said. He wants to add more um, and he wants to have a combination of old school toughness and grit combined with new school analytics and methods. So it's going to be interesting how he approaches this coaching and search process. You know, is he going to go with an old school head coach to maybe hire some assistants that are more young, analytical, and innovative? Is he going to go the college route? You know, he's going to follow the trends of, you know, the Rams and the Cardinals and try to find the next Sean McVay, which I please hope not. (laughs) But, you know, he can do what he wants. Mm -hmm. You know, is he going to go with a guy who I think fits that profile like a Jim Harbaugh or a Greg Roman who come from, you know, coaching staffs that use analytics in their system. They still have that old school grit. You know, they have experience. They've been to Super Bowls and done some good things in this league. So it'll be interesting to see how he approaches this uh, coaching search. And I'm looking forward to it. I think, you know, considering that he wants an emphasis on analytics and innovation, but combining it, I think, Those two guys are strong candidates to be the next head coach. So we'll see how it goes, man. Stay tuned, folks. Stay tuned. (laughs) Mm. Big changes are ahead, and it began today. I'm really glad. And I I, I mentioned this earlier when, um, when, you know, Kevin and Larry came up with this this, uh, idea of the four-man rush. You know, I really really thought that we came in at, at a really good time. 
And I, 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 I still think that we came at a really, really good time because, you know, it's, it's, it's very rare that you catch this chi- this type of change in a in a uh, professional sports franchise. Um, this this is this is going to be drastic, drastic change. If regardless of what happens to Cam, I mean, we are already on this on this this steamboat of change. There's no telling what's going to happen. But I know one thing: them boys might them boys might ball out Sunday. It's going to be interesting. They 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 just might ball out. So y'all make sure you act a fool down that month. <laughs> act. The food. All right. So, any closing remarks? Was that it? Because if that is, then we can uh, go ahead and sign up off of here, folks. Um, you know, keep keep your eyes and ears open um, for more football uh, football news on, on the Panthers, especially at our uh, at our website. That's the uh, the four man rush dot com. That's www dot the four man rush dot com. Of course, you can check us up. Uh, check us on all our uh, social media platforms, uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. Recently, yeah. Um, we, can cro- we, can, we can cross post on that stuff, so that's great. And, uh, yeah, keep listening to the podcast, guys. iTunes, Spotify, Podbean. We'll be on uh, Lipson and some other platforms here pretty soon, hopefully. And we can spread the love that is the four-man rush. So, once again, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much from be- on behalf of um, Kevin and Larry and Will, Kenneth, and you know Norris, aka Mike Allstock, Jadarius. What up, Monty? You out there somewhere? I'm sure. It's your big ass head. No, I'm just- <laughs> hey, and um, but yeah. Thanks, guys. We we really appreciate you guys coming on here and um, and, and engaging in, in uh, some football talk on our Panthers, man. What a day. Whether you listen to this podcast in the morning, afternoon, or evening, have a great day. Take care of yourself. And as always, keep pounding. Oh, yeah. You recorded? Ha, ha, ha. You funny, motherfucker. Ha, ha. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we good, we good, we good, we good. I head off tomorrow. I know, that's right. <laughs> Shit, nigga, I ain't got time to record tomorrow. Yeah, I think, nah, we good, cuz, we good. <laughs>